In this video, we're going to do a hands-on example where we create a simple find by query in Spring JPA. Find by query will allow us to look up some records in the database by a essentially a field or a column or an attribute that's not the primary key of that entity. So in our case, we have a series of specimens or specific plants, and we're going to look them up based on a foreign key back to the plant table. So this query will take the foreign key and we'll get back a list or a collection of specimens that match that plant. So here's what we're going to need. A DTO, which we already have, some kind of secondary lookup ID that we can use to look up these records, and then an interface that extends from CRUD repository, and a little bit of other framework that we're going to need that we already have. So let's jump right in. The most important part of this is what we're going to do first, which is the CRUD repository. By default with the CRUD repository, if we simply pass in the entity that we wish to save and the data type of its unique ID, it can figure out most of the CRUD operations by default. The simple ones like find by ID, find all, delete by ID, so on and so forth. It gets a little trickier here when we want to do a search based on a different column. We can use naming conventions to help us out a bit. So find by typically indicates that we're doing some type of lookup operation. And then plant ID indicates that we're searching by the plant ID. And we'll say int plant ID. If we look at our database table, we see that plant ID is here. So it will be able to figure that out based on naming conventions. Add a semicolon to terminate this method signature and then also determine the return type. Because we can have multiple specimens per one plant, we need to be able to return more than one specimen. And we can do that by using the list type. So let's say list and then specimen. We'll pass that in as the generic identifier to say that we are returning a collection of specimens. And then of course, take care of our imports. And believe it or not, we're all done with this, with this interface. Now I wanna give a quick walkthrough of what we're going to do. We just changed the CRUD repository. No changes required to the database. All we need to do is invoke that method that we just created on the CRUD repository interface. And remember, we just need to define the method. Using naming conventions, Spring figures out the rest. So here's our plan from here. First, I'm going to show you an overview of how the application works today. After that, we're going to make a small tweak to the HTML view to call an endpoint in our own application instead of referencing an external URL. Then we will define that endpoint in our controller. We'll have that call a simple one-line method in the service layer, and then we'll have that service layer method call a simple one-line method in the DAO, and that DAO will call down to the CRUD repository change that we just made. So let's get started. If we take a look at our application so far, we know that we can type a search term in the top and then hit search, and it will give us a list of plants. Right now, if we click on these plants, it doesn't do anything. We're not going to finish the entire UI in this video, but we can do is we can initiate a call to an endpoint that will return us any specimens for these plants. The page we're looking at is called plants.html, and when we take a look at the source, we see that it's currently hyperlinked to an external site, and it's using this plant ID to take us to that external site. Let's change things just a little bit. We will make this an endpoint, so I'm going to delete a significant amount here and simply say specimens by plant and then slash and then that plant ID. Now we need to do a little bit of string concatenation here so that it knows what is a variable and what is not. So when we're dealing with strings, the plus is the concatenation operator, which simply means append these strings to each other to make one final grand string. So our endpoint is called specimens by plant, and it's going to receive an ID. So we now have enough information to add this to our controller. Let's, look, let's go down towards the bottom, and we'll start to put together a method. We know that the plant ID is going to get passed in as part of the URL as an identifier. So we can reuse something similar that we used in our delete mapping from several videos ago. We can simply specify a curly like so, and then an ID, and then use path variable to grab that ID. As a matter of fact, I can simply copy this. Go back down to our method, and then boom, curly. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll call it plant ID, 
Now our parameter variable, we'll start with path variable, and we'll say plant ID. Now we have enough information to start calling our downstream services. So we'll start by defining our return type. String return value equals specimen details. Between these two lines, we can make a call to a service. And the method we're calling doesn't exist yet, but that's okay. We can go ahead and feel it out. So specimen service dot fetch specimens by plant ID. Terminate with a semicolon, pass our plant ID down, and we are going to anticipate that we're going to get a collection of specimens back. So we'll go ahead and do list with a generic identifier of specimen and call that specimens. Remember, we're not going to go through and see the whole uh, result page created in this video. We'll capture that in the next video, but we can at least set a breakpoint here when this is finished to make sure that we are getting the correct number of specimens back for a given plant ID. Now we see we have a red line here because this method does not exist. So hold down Alt, press Enter, and let's go ahead and create the method fetch specimens by plant ID in the interface I specimen service, like so. Now we know that putting it in the interface in this case is not enough because this interface is implemented by a class. We have to add it to the class as well. But luckily, IDEA helps us out here. It tells us we have one related problem. It takes us directly to that class. And then from there, we can select the method and choose implement. No business logic here. So we're simply going to say return specimen DAO dot fetch specimens by plant ID. And then again, pass on down that plant ID. Well, holy smokes, guess what? We're in the service layer. We've not yet created this method on our DAO layer. So we're calling a method that doesn't exist, but we know how to handle this, right? Because we just did. Alt enter and create method. And that takes us into the interface. As soon as it's added in the interface, it realizes that the implementation does not have that method. So we go to our implementation, of which we have two, so we actually have to do this twice. Alt Enter, Implement Methods, and there we go, Fetch Specimen by Plant ID. Now this is one of two classes that implements that iSpecimenDAO interface, but this is the one that's actually accessing the database. So from here, we simply wire this up to what we started with at the very beginning of this video, which is our specimen repository. So note specimen repository, find by plant ID, and then we can simply pass in that plant ID. And at this point, we've gone from HTML view to controller to service to DAO, and the DAO is now calling the specimen repository. Now we know we have this old specimen DAO stub, which is meant for like a an implementation that does not have a database. So I'm going to go ahead and implement methods. And on this one, since it's just a stub, I'm going to have it return an empty list of specimens. We'll say return new array list specimen. Won't worry about putting an implementation of that into our stub. I've set a few breakpoints now so we can try things out. First, let's take a look at our data. And we see that we have our specimens data here and there are about eight different specimens and they're associated with several different plants. I can run just a normal SQL query by choosing edit in line and then say select star from specimen where plant underscore ID equals 6351. So we're getting a subset of the specimens that only belong to plant 6351. Looks like we have three specimens. Now let's go back to our page and I'm going to search for, well, let's say fireweed, for instance. And this item that comes up here is indeed number 6351. As a matter of fact, if you take a look down towards the bottom, it shows us that it has assembled together this URL for 6351. So we click this, our breakpoint hits, and then we can see how things work on the back end. So first of all, did we get our path variable plant ID? We see, sure enough, 6351. So we take that and pass that from controller where we are now, down to service, 6351 again. I'll choose F9 as I've set several breakpoints and we see now we're in the service and now we're in the DAO and the DAO is going to reach into our specimen repository and run this find by query. So we can't step into that because that's generated. So I'll simply F9 to step over 
that takes us back to our controller. And when I mouse over specimens here, what do we see? We see an array list with size three, and then we can see that there are three elements and we can expand to see a bit more detail if you want. Just remember a couple things from here. We have specimen ID one, specimen ID three, and specimen ID 15. I'll go ahead and choose F9 and then run back to our results and we see that they agree. Specimen ID 1, 3, and 5, and they all belong to the same plant ID. That's not a look at all the specimens in our table, it's simply a look at all the specimens that ladder up to this plant ID here. So we've proven out the back end, and in our next video we will take a look at how to make a snazzy front end for this detail page as well. So that completes our lesson on doing a simple find by query in Spring JPA. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.